She went silent, literally, and fought depression until her therapist suggested, why don't you try drawing as therapy? It might be helpful. And she did. Her sketches led to her sewing tapestries in the Yemenite tradition, and it literally saved her life. You will see a sampling of those pieces of art this morning. Jody Sabin is a graduate of Princeton University and the American Film Institute. She's an accomplished writer, filmmaker, and musical director. She's won three daytime Emmy Awards for her work on shows such as The Guiding Light and As the World Turns. She also wrote and directed the terrific film about wine called Bottle Shock, which some of you probably saw. She met Trudy and an incredible friendship began. Jody authors Trudy's life story, which is called Stick, Stitched and Sewn, The Life-Saving Art of Trudy Strobel, available on Amazon. It's a fabulous book. I encourage you to get it. Maya Savin Miller met Trudy through her mother and became a curator and producer of Trudy's exhibits featuring her art. After her bat mitzvah, she also became a passionate advocate for Holocaust education and a speaker on anti-Semitism, focusing on younger audiences. Welcome to you all, and let me now turn the program over to Jody, Trudy, and Maya. Thank you. We're honored to be you with all, you. We are honored. Thank you all for having us. Hal, thank you for putting this together. I know you've worked very hard on it. Um, I think, I think Maya, you should start and tell how we all met because our life, all of our lives changed when we met. The, and so you tell the story because it started with you. <laughs> yeah, so when I was about 12 years old, I was preparing for my bat mitzvah and the Torah portion that I was trying to work with was a census. It was a list of names. And so I wasn't sure what my bat mitzvah project was going to be, what I was going to talk about at my bat mitzvah, but I ended up settling on this idea of the numbering of individual human lives and how that can lead to, at the very extremes, can lead to genocide. And for my bat mitzvah project, I wanted to share my bat mitzvah with the memory of a child who had been murdered in the Holocaust before she could reach the age of her own bat mitzvah. So sort of trying to figure out where to begin, I reached out to the Los Angeles Museum of the Holocaust asking if they knew anyone who was holding the memory of a child that I could adopt. And I was connected with Trudy. So I went to Trudy's house sort of expecting to hear someone else's story. But when we walked into her house, we were immediately greeted by this incredible display of Trudy's art and also by Trudy's story. And I took my mom with me and that's how we all first met. Yeah. Trudy, do you want to elaborate on yeah. that? Why, why, of course. So my dear friends, I see this, this child standing by the door with her mother and there were a couple of other people with us. And, um, and she's holding a challah that she baked and brought me. So it wasn't just the challah. I look at this child knowing that she wanted to a, a name of a child that was murdered in the Holocaust for, in addition, you know, to add to her bar mitzvah. And so I see, I see this brilliant little brain here and this loving heart that has come to me to visit me and bring me a challah. I, I, my dear friends, that moment of my life, I'll never forget. So, so when we first walked into Trudy's house, expecting to meet Trudy and to, and to share a memory that Trudy was carrying from another survivor who had passed away, who was a dear friend of Trudy's. But the artwork that Trudy had created, which adorned all of her walls, was so stunning and so breathtaking. And it was a firsthand testament to what had happened to Trudy as a child at the hands of her Nazi captors. And it was stunning. And Maya and I got in the car to go home and Maya, Maya said, we have to share this with the world. This can't just sit in Trudy's living room. We can't be the only people that see that. We sort of had no idea how to do that. 
And, um, and, you know, Maya's first idea was, well, you should tell your first idea was to, um, to ha have an exhibition somehow, but none of us knew what to do. So do you want to say what you did? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, we wanted to put on an exhibition, we didn't know how to do it. I was really young. So there were no like, there was nothing that I could figure out to do. Um, so instead, I wrote a short story about Trudy's life um, called Trudy's Goose, which has since been adapted to like a short stop motion animation film. Um, but that was sort of the beginning of all of our collaboration with Trudy and, and the beginning of our friendship with Trudy. So, so a couple years after this, Maya uh, found out about the Dragon Kim Foundation, which gives grants to um, to teenagers who have an idea that uh, for a project where they can have an effect on their community. They're a Christian-based organization. Maya applied for the grant, got the grant, and launched the project. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, that was that's how I launched what is now called a life in tapestry. It's uh, a, a traveling exhibition of, of Trudy's tapestry work, which has been put on hold because of COVID and travel restrictions, but hopefully at some point it'll move somewhere near all of you and you guys can go see Trudy's work in person, which I think is the best way to see Trudy's work. The second best way is to get the book and look at, <laughs> look at, you know, all the pieces in the book, but yeah, that's, that's where I fit into all of this. And so, and so during this period, um, Maya had to go to school so she couldn't write a book. So I, so I said, Trudy, I've never written a book before, but I'm going to write a book about your life. And so at the point when we met, Trudy was a very quiet person and Maya is a very quiet person and I'm not a very quiet person, but um, I, we were trying to get Trudy to tell us the story of her life. And it wasn't that easy because first of all, it's an upsetting story and the memories were upsetting. But also, Trudy would just tell us little bits at a time. So we like to say that the book was written in fits and spurts over a long period of time where Trudy would, and still, sometimes we'll give a conversation like this, and Trudy will tell a story that we never heard before. So, um, but, so I applied and got a grant from the Memorial Foundation for Jewish Culture to put together this book, because Trudy, who is a very generous person, would make these tapestries and give them away. And so we had to reach out to people. One of your congregants, who I believe is on this call, Sarah Freeman, um, yeah. <laughs> she and her husband um, had helped Trudy in a difficult time and Trudy made them a beautiful piece. And so we contacted Sarah. Sarah was lovely and let us um, photograph her work, the work that she owned. And so we, we uh, the photographer and I traveled around photographing the work. It was sometimes more difficult for Maya to put the show together because not every adult wanted to lend a 16 year old their work to put up in a show, um, but they, they put it together. Um, Trudy's work is a gift to us because it's her story and it's her story in thread and um, and, and the way Trudy stitches, she, I don't know if any of you have seen embroidery thread, but it comes in six strands. Trudy stitches in single th strand thread so that she can actually do a portrait and it's the likeness is just perfection and it's done in thread. But Trudy learned all of this from her mother and it was Trudy's mother who was a seamstress and a stitcher in a coal huts, a collective farm in the Ukraine, um, who used the skills she had to help them survive the Holocaust. And Trudy, you should, you should talk about your mother and your father and how this first started and, yes, well, and your papa doll. And we'll put up a picture of your papa doll. All right. Uh, uh, my uh, parents expected a child and they were hoping for a little girl. And um, uh, this was my, my father. He was um, in charge of merchandise going in and out from this kolkhoz. This is a collective farm. And so on one of his journeys, he found a doll. And here's the picture of the doll and that he brought home. Um, 
so it was in 1937, the Soviets come in, the communists, and Vasily Laboon, you have to come with us. And they uh, took they took him uh, away. And of course, at this at this time, my mother realized that this was the um, her her last um, what is it called her her last program that she was witnessing <clears throat> because um, there had been several men from this uh, kolkhoz that had been taken away and never returned. So she um, knew what was happening. This was in November, 1937, and I was born in March of 1938. And uh, as soon as she was able to travel, she went to Krivoy Rok. Krivoy Rok was the town that housed the men's, pr the men's, men's prison. And so she arrived and there was a long line of women and children waiting to see their husbands, fathers, uh, uncles, and so forth. And uh, finally it was her turn. I wanna see Vasilya Laboon. And she, uh, uh, well, he's no longer with us. So where is he? I want him to see my little girl, well, our little girl really. And uh, and he said, they he's, taken to Siberia. So she came back home uh, to, uh, to this kolkhoz and uh, her work, her work um, uh, was, her, her work was changed to be a milking 10 cows every morning and every night and cleaning the stalls. And uh, so th this went on for till 1942, I was in four. Now the Nazis come in and uh, knocking on the door, uh, take the clothes that you can take with you and all the food, take it along and put it on. They came in with wooden wagons uh, drawn by horses and also jeeps and you know all kinds of modern equipment, but it was mainly these uh, these uh, uh, wooden wagons uh, that were drawn by horses. And so she she put things on there. She got got things together, and I just held on to my papa doll, and uh, that was my most precious possession, my papa doll. <laughs> And so now we are on the, on the journey of um, guarded uh, by, uh, by Nazis and guns and, and um, never, we didn't even know where we were going to begin with, but we ended up in Loch, Poland. Loch was a, a gathering place for Jews that were taken there and, um, and, and then dispersed again. So we were almost there <clears throat> and a um, Nazi um, SS man, he sees my doll, he sees me with my doll. And this is the, the um, piece that I made of this experience. And uh, he tears my doll away from me and I cry and, and mama says, Sha, don't cry. She was worried. I would be taken away or shot or something. We saw other, other, uh, uh, much of this happening during the journey. And so we're now in Loach and we're talking to go. Yes. I'm going to interrupt you just to explain. This is called Russia 1942. This is a very large tapestry um, that the, which is Trudy's a picture of Trudy's mother, Masha, Trudy, and the doll. And um, so you can get, uh, you know, an idea of the intricacy of this work that Trudy does. Sorry, Trudy, uh, I just wanted no, to explain that. No, it's, it, it's quite all right <clears throat> because I didn't describe any of it. I, I'm showing the transportation we had of cattle wagons uh, from Loach as we were taken out from there. Uh, but first, uh, we were uh, we were told to go into a big hall and undress. 
women and children. And I don't know what they wanted to do to us in there. We were just in there uh, and uh, at a, after a certain time, just, just the idea you're four years old and everyone is naked and the fear, always these guns, these rifle butts and the horrible way of, we, of how we were addressed. And it, it works on you as a child, you become a nothing. And do you know, my dear friends, that stayed with me most of my life. So any, any, anyway, so here, uh, all right, we, we leave this hall and uh, we're sent to the Jewish ghetto. And it was so filled of people, so densely filled. We had a room, but there were three families. And uh, mama then uh, was asked which, what she could do, and uh, uh, and uh, as it, you know, she could sew, so she was needed for this. And so we uh, then were asked to uh, uh, to to go to a to a train to take whatever we had to take along. We didn't have anything. Actually, the food that was given was a piece of bread and some beets. Uh, my dear friends, you cannot imagine uh, the, um, the, the agony you go through of hunger in that, in that first part of my, uh, up to seven years old in my life. And um, so, all right, so now we're, uh, we're told we were going to be transported to a camp where, uh, mother was uh, going to be ordered to sew and we were told to go to the train station. In that train station there was nothing but cattle cars and dogs watching us, you know, so none of us could escape. And um, uh, so as we were going into this cattle car, the opening they had planks, wooden planks going into that door. And I was on the outside with mama and I looked down and there was um, the German shepherd with his teeth open, very, very fearful. And um, then I saw shiny boots <laughs> and that vision stayed with me the rest of my life. So uh, we're now in the cattle car, there was a pale somewhere in the corner, uh, but we were pushed in. Drekigayuda, dirty Jew, get in many, many derogatory words and uh, pushed in. There was no room for anyone to sit down. Here we are in this cattle car. People got sick, they vomited. Do you know what that smells like after an hour? But this was for two days we were in there, no food, nothing to drink. There were, there were other mishaps, bodily functions not working. It, it, it is uh, indescribable, this stinge that was in that cattle car. So we arrived in a camp and there uh, uh, we're told we're in which barrack to go and which uh, bed we would have, mama and I. And, uh, and all this time, you see, the miraculous thing is that I could stay with her. And it is perhaps because she was such a kind, wonderful human being to help others to sew. There she is, my precious mama. And um, uh, she helped others to sew on, on the badges on their clothes or repair things on the way. And among them was also a, um, a soldier that she helped repair a jacket. So perhaps is this why I could stay with mama? I don't know, but I'm here today still. And uh, I'm, you know, can, cannot believe that all of this happened to us and that I could stay with her. Uh, so we're getting our, our bunk and there were two stories. Trudy. Yes. Trudy, the, and I want, I want to point out, so Trudy's mother 
had no preparation for being the hero that she was. Trudy's mother was a woman who lived on a on a Stalin a Stalinist collective farm. This this is Masha Trudy's mother, but Trudy's mother was a hero in many ways of the Holocaust. She rose to heroic heights in order to save her child, and so this this um this ability of a mother to sort of transcend the strength that she even knew she had in order to save a child is i think a very important part of trudy's story i mean they could have been annihilated at any step of the way they were marched 650 miles across europe peril after peril that she was able to navigate and she helped many people in many ways. But the one thing is, one thing she taught her very young child is to remain invisible. Just stay by my side and remain invisible. And, and, and so in addition to this intrepid mother, um, tr this Trudy's own se sense of to survive by invisibility is, is something that had informed her life for a long time and informed her depression later on. I mean, Trudy is no longer invisible, but it's the lessons we learn when we are young that, that affect the rest of our life. So this is Masha, and now we're going to um, show you what Trudy is talking about now, which is illustrated in what I call her Sistine Chapel piece, because it's an incredibly, um, it's called Final Destination, and it's a very, very large piece that took Trudy 10 years to depict. Mm -hmm. And um, yes. and it tells her story of what is yes. really all of our story. Yes, you you see, I, tr I show motion as to all these years, this, mo this motion was similar in every, in every camp. Uh, we came in, and uh, then lived there for a while in 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 a in a uh, camp, and then were moved again. But as time goes on, as I show on the towards the end of the war, uh, look how emaciated we had already become, and it looked like we were hopeless. I do uh, portray here the rabbis being. Uh, uh, made to dig a grave for um, uh, for for the dead, and actually for their own death. And this is from history books. But I had to include this besides telling you about my experience through that through that time. And um, on the top, uh, can you can we come up a little bit? Um, yes, uh, on top here, of course, we arrived in cattle cars and uh, were then, as we were murdered, also uh, um, disintegrated in the ovens. And uh, I show here um, six, uh, six of these bellowous clouds from the ovens of six murdered million Jews and the most notorious camps that existed at that time. And, but I do try to show a spark of hope in the center in that I show a Jewess and she's, this is from a very famous song that was written during the Holocaust. Unter deine Weiße Stern, under your white stars, stretch to me your pure hand so I can rest my tears, so my tears can rest in your hand. And that, that was the hope, the wonderful, one beautiful song in the Holocaust that expresses hope. And I show uh, uh, the maker's hand with, with all the symbols of our uh, Torah and, and so forth. And then on the outside, the, uh, when when we were uh, liberated and went out, uh, I saw some uh, daisies growing in the in the grass. This was now in Germany, and uh, I picked a few as as we were leaving. Actually, 
the the um, uh, I I need to tell you this when the when the soldier came to the door, an American soldier, and he says, "The war is over. You're free." And we are now in in this barrack, and we didn't hear very much at all for many hours. It was quiet, and everyone exhausted, finished. And then Mama says, "Come, Trudele, we're going to America." And uh, there's that last bit of energy that comes through you. And we're leaving, and the soldier said to walk down the the uh, the, the road to uh, to the displacement camp. And I didn't know what displacement camp was. It was another camp. Um, but my, my dear friends, you see my parents at one time, there was a small opening in Russia for Jews to leave Russia uh, many years before the 80s. This, this happened so long ago. And uh, but my parents didn't quite make it. So her wish now for me was, we're going to America. There will be a future for my, for my child. And that it was the strength of my mother. When, when Trudy left the, when they were released from the concentration camp, in the in in the dirt or the lawn or whatever was outside the concentration camp and this is one of trudy's first memory memories of liberation there were these marguerites these flowers the, the flowers that frame the painting uh the the tapestry growing and she picked one and she smiled and that marguerite wrapped with the barbed wire is a visual theme throughout a lot of trudy's work that and the and the theft of the doll um so Trudy, I'm going to sort of cut 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 ahead a yes. little bit. So they, they were taken to a displacement camp, which was really not that much better than the concentration camp, except that they were actually in a labor camp, except that there was food. And, um, and towels and soap. <laughs> oh. Oh, we went, we went mute. In, in, in the displacement camp where one day and you know things were still pretty bleak one day the red cross came and um do you want to tell the story of the beads you tell the story of the beads because you've written about Trudy it you should tell the story <laughs> oh all right all right my dear up, uh, the the uh, red cross ladies come and they bring the children a wooden box that contains uh pencils and erasers and a small toy and mine had beads and my dear friends, I, I tell you, I, I put the beads in my hand and, and I said, Mama, look at this. I was so impressed. They were like, like jewels to me. And then uh, Mama looked at me and I said, Ma, uh, as I was so excited. She says, we'll make something of this, Trudela. And I said, could it be a goose, Mama? And <laughs> well, yes, it can be a goose. Not, not even realizing what I'm, what I'm actually asking about. And so she did find a picture in the camp and, uh, of a flying goose. She did an outline of it on parchment paper and there was no, no uh, uh, material to be had. It was 45, there was no material you could get anywhere. So she cut off a piece of, of her own skirt from Russia a black skirt and attach this parchment design of the goose flying onto the fabric and taught me how to um, how to embroider with with uh, beads and needle and thread and then she says be sure to put the beads very close together at the neck because the goose needs a stiff neck in order to fly and also these words stay with you the, all of your life. And I think it, it, I'm sure it had an, even a deeper meaning to go straight forward, to, to live a straight life, to do the right thing. And uh, as, so, you see- Trudy, I want yeah. to explain. So that, that 
that goose that you just saw, that is Masha, Trudy's mother's skirt, the skirt that she wore, yeah. you know, throughout, throughout the, the, that time they were trying to survive. And on that skirt are the beads that were given to Trudy by the Red Cross. They didn't have quite enough beads to finish the goose and her mother said we'll finish it in America which they did do but that goose is a piece of our collective history it's also what Maya wrote the story about was about the goose with the neck um, yes. that had to be held high so so it could fly and survive um so I mean that's important and then Trudy's the you know, we, we all think they were liberated and they were freed and they could come to America, but, but that wasn't true. We weren't, we, um, uh, we Americans weren't so receptive. We had these policies, xenophobic policies um, in our own country and we turned a lot of refugees away then as we do now. Um, and Trudy and her mother were stuck in a very hostile anti-Semitic Germany for Trudy mm -hmm. five years. Yes, for five years. In 51, we uh, could then go to Bremerhaven and, uh, and come to America. And a, we, we boarded a, a ship called General Hahn. It was an army ship. And it took us um, six days to cross the Atlantic. Uh, and um, <laughs> you know, there was a lot of food, but uh, you see, I, I refer to food all the time, uh, but there, there was a lot of food, but uh, everyone was kind of very sick because the ocean was very nervous. We went up and down, up and down. It was, after all, not a beautiful big ship. It was an army ship. And uh, so we are now... Uh, on the sixth day, the captain says, Statue of Liberty. And oh, we ran up on deck and, and mama sees us and she cries and she holds me. And we're, we're in America, she says. And um, the, appre the appreciation of our beautiful country is something that is very deep within me and when I know of newcomers coming here that have a right to come here, when they come, they have that same feeling of, of hope, hope for their family, for not to riches. We, we never, mama and I never thought of riches, which we never did, we never became more, did, we just had a comfortable life. So, uh, she um, uh, she said, uh, Trudela, now we're going to have a new life, and it was it was that way because we uh, boarded a train and came to Chicago, and this is where we started our new life in America. And the the uh, when when I tell you, my dear friends, that I have this this great um, uh, appreciation for our country. And uh, we have to think of what is happening that we need to fight the new anti-Semitism that is good and, and the white nationalists that are on the rise. And, and that, that is something none of us want anywhere in the world and yet it's happening everywhere again. And uh, you, genocide is not confined to our past. Genocide and ethnocide persists in our world today. And it is to all of us to stand up for tolerance, inclusion and compassion. We need civility to return. I wrote these words down because there's so much of me and my thinking. And the most of all, we need respect and civility for all of us. And then we can just have a continued wonderful life in this great country. And of course, there are many, many thoughts, but we all go to school. We all have things that are taught to us and, um, and know what is right to, uh, 
to behave towards all human beings. Um, so Trudy, Trudy met another survivor. They, they, their meeting was arranged and they got married and they had two boys and the boys grew up and the boys left the house. And then they, and they never talked about being Holocaust survivors. Neither Trudy nor her husband Hans talked about it to their children until their children were grown up. But a lot of the suppression of the trauma of her youth was building inside of her. And so in, in her late 40s, Trudy became seriously depressed, as Hal mentioned, and then stitching, which had saved their lives in the Holocaust, because Trudy's mother was put to work as a stitcher, and that is the only reason that they were able to survive. Um, stitching was saved Trudy again. And what Trudy, Trudy's initial project, which is on permanent display at the Los Angeles Museum of the Holocaust, is called Badges of Shame. And what Trudy discovered, uh, these are two of the dolls from Badges of Shame. We're gonna share them with you now. Um, it is, a, it, Trudy discovered that this Jewish star that we Jews were forced to wear to identify ourselves as the other during the Holocaust was not the first instance of government mandated garb that Jews were forced to wear in order to single them out. Trudy's research and Trudy, who didn't have a formal education in until much later in life, her education as a child was merely survival. Trudy is an amazing researcher. So Trudy did all of this research and she created this series of dolls, which I encourage you all to go see. But these, these are two of the dolls on display. And Trudy, um, Trudy says she stitched and she cried, but it was a cathartic experience. And then it was after that that she realized that she could draw almost anything she wanted to draw with no formal lessons again. And that's when she began doing the tapestry work. And Trudy has done over a hundred tapestries. It's amazing. And she, you, you didn't start until your late forties. That's right, that's right. Uh, I just had, uh, it took me a year to do these costumes and uh, it, uh, it was a year of tears because I lived through that, through every century of our people and women especially, I addressed the women's problem because very seldom do we read anything about women and what we suffered. As, as they left home, they had to dress different, wear badges and uh, different badges, strange headdresses to show that they were Jews. How, how hard is that in history? So uh, anyway, I finished the, the collection and took it to the Federation, to the Holocaust Museum in the Federation on the 12th floor. And to my amazement, they accepted it. I am honored to this day. The museum has moved to several areas and now is in a permanent place in Pan Pacific Park and Beverly and Fairfax. And um, the collection is still there. I'm so honored and appreciative. To give you some perspective, we're going to put up a picture that shows you how large these tapestries are. So that's my Fiat. And this is an eight foot tapestry. So we're not talking about small undertakings. This, this, particular, this particular piece has 12 frames and it, and it depicts uh, different periods in Jewish life and Jewish mm -hmm. history. Mm -hmm. but we're talking about very large pieces. So these pieces took an extraordinary amount of time. Trudy starts stitching sometimes before the sun rises. She mm -hmm. stitches like the whole day. And when Maya, when Maya got the funding to put on the exhibit of her work, transporting these pieces was not an easy thing. So it sounds like, okay, we'll grab these, these, well, you can explain what happened, but mm -hmm. we'll grab these, pieces of art and we'll put them up in a gallery no way you know they're they're it required art movers and picture hangers and you can show an image of them. yeah Maya measured everything she knew exactly where every piece should go 
she is a natural talent of a curator. <laughs> Thank you, Trudy. Um, so, um, so Trudy still continues to stitch, and um, and she she just completed a a, a a very large piece of Jerusalem. It had been her her dream to get to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. um, and she got a commission and she made this piece. And mm -hmm. um, after after she came home, she, she 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 got a commission, got the money, went to Jerusalem, came back and depicted this modern. This is these were the first horses she'd ever done. And so this is the current current Jerusalem, the history of Jerusalem. So also a very large piece that has yet to be framed because it's sort of hot off the press. Yes, 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 it was, it, it, it you see, I left uh, Israel and I thought, well, I'll have to do a piece about Israel. I mean, what a, a, a happening in my life that I should witness this and was able to do this in my lifetime. And so I uh, um, uh, decided and I, and I thought, well, there are millions of pictures taken of Jerusalem and Israel and millions of paintings done through the centuries. So what could there be that is new? And, or at least a little different. So I decided to return back to my historical view of, of, Jewish, um, of, of Jewish life, of Jewish historical uh, points in our history and uh, decided to show that the uh, Moors and the Crusaders were fighting for 500 years. And sometimes they, each of them uh, were head of, of Jerusalem or not own Jerusalem, but you know, politically were head of Jerusalem. And so I needed to have that in there. And of course the pertinent points of Jerusalem. So when you look at the picture, that you can see, well, this is Jerusalem. And that's what I wanted to accomplish. And Trudy, I also want to mention something that Hal brought up, which is that in, in the course of Trudy's research, uh, Trudy was studying archaeological digs and, and, and the Jew, typically Jewish stitchery. And mm -hmm. she, she um, came across a stocking that had been excavated in Israel. And on the stocking, was stitching and that stitching were the Yemenite techniques of our ancestors and Trudy realized that these had been somewhat forgotten and so a lot of her work resurrects this particular stitching and Trudy's drawn this chart that we're showing you and um and gives classes and tries to you know tries to spread this technique so that it doesn't remain only in Trudy's work. Yes. Well, you see, these are very simple stitches. They go back to 600. And uh, embroidery was then just applied gold that you used a lot in ceremonial costumes. But um, that's why I said they're simple stitches, only a few of them. But the way they are put together of this Yemenite uh, program, the Yemenite idea, the way they put it together, it is so beautiful and uh, to me for forever has to be within our broader embroidery circle. And I include it in everything I do and just love it. Can I say something? Oh, please, I, Sarah, I my see Sarah, the olive bed in your Sarah, background. Sarah, 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 Sarah <laughs> okay. my, my my Hi, most, honey. My most beautiful Sephardic <laughs> Jewess. You were my first <laughs> Sephardic Jewess that I ever embroidered. And you remember that, don't you, my angel? I, <laughs> so that, oh, that, that's that, what that I, is what the, I have to share. This is the portrait of, of my Sarah here. <laughs> okay, I, I don't know what I did good in my life to have to have this honor, privilege, luck to meet you, Trudy, with my husband and my girl when we, we you invited us to your house. And as you just 
such a gentle, beautiful soul, you open up to us and you told us your story and you took us to, to your room. It was before you put everything in a museum. And when you opened the door and I saw the hundreds of dolls that you described, <laughs> we were in awe. And then you, you, I don't know why, you gave me as a parting gift, you gave me this unbelievable, what you're talking about, Hebrew, yes. uh, Yamanite stitches, it's in the book too. And you said, I want you to have it because you're a yeah. Hebrew teacher. Yeah. Said, but you hardly know me. I mean, yeah. you gave it well, to me. Well, Sarah, dear, I felt you were the right person to appreciate this because the letters are Ashkenazi design and all the inside embroidery are Sephardic techniques, are these Yemenite techniques. And she, I stitched us together, my dear friends. I know, and but you, you didn't <laughs> you stop did you there. Can. You didn't stop there. You asked Clary, my husband, that was taking a picture of husband then, to give you just a small picture of mine. Yes, yes. And he sent it to you, gave it to you, and then you made this for me. This yes. Is, I mean, yes. This, this is, is unbelievable. Yes. <laughs> I'm shaking while I'm saying this. Oh. I, I never forget it. I'll cherish this forever. I love you. Yes, and me too. I'm. And Sarah, I, you, you and your husband were so helpful to me. Oh. That was a very difficult part of my life. I know. And, and it, it's it's so good to have met you. There, and there, can you, you show it again? Huh? <laughs> what? Can you show the picture again? Yes. <laughs> it's a portrait in thread. It's all yeah. teaching. It's unbelievable. And, uh, and then last year, when she had her book signing in Pasadena, we had to go and see her. And I recommend, this is an unbelievable book. Mm -hmm. To read yes. all the special pictures. Yes. Thank you, Trudy, very I'm much. So, I'm so glad I could see you today, my dear. <laughs> well, we, we, we certainly love the presentation and with the approval of uh, Jody, Maya, and Trudy, um, we were going to have a Q&A right now, but I think we'll move into our candle lighting remembrance session. And then if Trudy and Jody and Maya want to stay a few minutes after we finish our candles for questions and answers, maybe show a few more pictures for those who want to stay, um, that would be great. But um, marvelous presentation. We want to hear more. We also want to get um, to our, our memorial um, section of the, of the program. So let me turn it over to, uh, to uh, another of our co-chairs, Josh Kaplan, and then we will come back to all of you. All right, thank you, Hal. Uh, and we are so glad that members of the Best Shalom community and many of our friends could join us today for this special program. I, um, I am Josh Kaplan. I am a board member of the CBS Men's Club as a trustee and one of today's event chairs. Uh, Beth Shalom Men's Club is a member of the Federation of Jewish Men's Clubs, and every year we participate in their Yellow Candle program. And we have won national awards for our events and projects for decades. Uh, FJMC has distributed Yellow Holocaust Remembrance candles to its affiliates all over the world, and we help continue that tradition. If your candle, is nearby, please get it ready to light in a few minutes, in a few moments. Uh, we light these candles and say a special prayer this time of year to remember those who perished in the Holocaust, but to also honor those like Trudy who survived and who share their memories, teach our youth and adults about dealing with hatred, anti-Semitism and bigotry both now and then. Our men's club delivered candles to our members and if you did not light them last Thursday on the official day of remembrance, it is also very appropriate to light them during our program. And we will get to that shortly. We also hope you will make a donation to the CBS Men's Club Yom HaShoah Fund and directions are in the letter that came with your candle. 
You can do it online with a credit card or send a check to Robin made out to CBS Men's Club, Yom HaShoah Fund. Your contribution will help it possible for us to do projects like this. And your generosity helped us build our Yom HaShoah Memorial in front of our synagogue. We will continue to do these educational projects with your help. Thank you. And now let me bring back Rabbi Jay and Cantor Ray for our candle lighting ceremony. If you're capable, please rise at this moment. Get a moment to reflect. We light the candle and we offer this blessing of the yellow candle. We light this yellow candle to rekindle God's flame, to shine his light upon the world once again, to sanctify the memories of the millions of souls, to honor their prayers and all their lost souls. We bless this existence by being alive, to light this yellow candle as proof we survived. We now will say the traditional memorial prayer, El Malay Rachamim. El Malay Rachamim, God full of compassion who dwells on high, grant perfect rest beneath the sheltering wings of Shekhinah, your divine presence. El Malay Rachamim, a prayer that originated in the Jewish communities of Western and Eastern Europe, where it was recited for the martyrs of the Crusades and the Ukrainian-Polish pogroms of the mid-1600s, is a plea that the soul be granted menucha, nechona, proper rest in Gan Eden. Through our prayers and good deeds, we hope to earn God's compassion for the departed souls of those who are dear to us. El Malay Rathamim, Shochen Bam Romim, Hamse Menucha Nechona, Tachat Kanfe Chashchina, Im Kedoshim Utahorim, Kezohar Harakiah Mazhiri Lenishmot Yakirenu shall Kalhu Leolami Balharachamim. Yasti rehem beseter kanafav leolamim. Bitror, bitror, achayim et nishmatam. Adonai hu nachalatam. Ve'anuhu. Beshalom amish kavam, ben omar Fully compassionate God on high, to our six million brothers and sisters murdered because they were Jews, grant clear and certain rest with you in the lofty heights of the sacred and pure, whose brightness shines like the very glow of heaven. Source of mercy, forever enfold them in the embrace of your wings. Secure their souls in eternity. God, they are yours. They will rest in peace. Amen. We recite the Kaddish. Yit gadal v'yit gadash shemei rabah v'almad divra chirute v'amlich malchute v'chayechon uv'yomechon uv'chaye d'chol beit Yisrael v'gala v'zman kariv v'imru. Amen. Yehe shme rabam varach leolam u meo maya. Yit barach vish tabach vit baar vit raman vit nase. Vit adar vit alev vit alal shme de kudsha brichu. Le ela min kol birchata vashirata. Tush bechata venechemata. Da amiram beoma vim ru. Amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shamaya. Bachaim alenu veo ko Yisrael vim ru. Amen. Say shalom bin Romav. Kuya ase shalom. Alenu veo ko Yisrael. 
Vimru, Amen. May God, who ordains harmony and peace in the universe, grant harmony and peace to us, to all Israel and all humankind, and let us all say, Amen. Amen. At this point, um, as we mentioned, um, for those who would like to stay on for a few minutes with uh, our three special guests for questions and answers, and maybe to see a few more of Trudy's artworks, uh, please uh, continue to stay on. Um, but for those who have other obligations, I thought maybe we'd close with a short uh, final comment from Trudy before we get to uh, closing from uh, another co-chair, Andrew Weiss. Trudy, just a, a short uh, kind of sum up or, or uh, words as, as we end, come to the end of the program. Well, this is the time of the year where um, the voices of survivors are so important to share with all of, with all of our community. And I, I'm so privileged to be with you, my dear friends in the synagogue, uh, to have invited us to be with you. And I'm humbled and I thank you. Thank you, Trudy. Thank you for those wonderful closing thoughts. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Andrew Vies, and I'm the uh, communications chair for the Men's Club. Uh, it was such an honor to have you, Trudy, Jody, and Maya, join us today for our program. Uh, the three of you have taught us so much about the past and the present, and you've moved us so much with your messages. You, uh, you're all inspired to us to work harder to make our community and our world better and to make our understanding and tolerant places to live, work, and raise our families. I do hope that you'll check out uh, Trudy and Jody's book, Stitched and Sewn, The Life-Saving Art of Holocaust Survivor Trudy Strobel. I shared a link in the comments uh, so you can directly buy it through Amazon. Uh, it's a beautiful book of art, storytelling, in the world. And you could also visit uh, Trudy's website, trudystrobel.com. Many thanks to Rabbi Jay Siegel, Cantor Ray Cohen and our Men's Club President, Todd Stelvick for participating in our program today. And to my colleagues, Josh Kaplan and Hal Dash for joining me with putting this event together. Special thanks to Brina Prater for introducing us to Trudy, Jody, and Maya. Brina saw them speak some time ago and they thought and thought that they would be presenting in such a great program and uh, it's true and it was great. And of course, thank you to Robin Seppi for helping us promote this wonderful event. And next time you're at Beth Shalom, take a minute to look at our Holocaust Memorial created by our friend and artist, Granville Beals, who is with us today. And thank you to his wife, uh, Tracy, for joining us. Read the inscriptions on the memorial that recall the dark days of the past, but also have the inspiring messages today and for our future. It's so important uh, to remember those, those words. And it's so great to see so many young uh, kids from our uh, Hebrew school joining us this morning. And think about the words that Trudy and Jody and Maya have so eloquently spoken today. Never forget, always remember, never stop learning. And thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you, Andrew. And thanks to all the participants. Great, great to have you all here. And um, now if, if, if Maya and Trudy and uh, Jody have a few minutes, um, uh, may we ask you to stay around and, and answer a few questions for those who have questions and maybe show a few more pieces of work if that's if that's okay with you all oh that'd be wonderful thank you and, and how debbie caddis did i say that right wrote in the chat that the sisterhood will plan a field trip to see trudy's work uh maya has a website yeah if you're interested in seeing trudy's work in person i would encourage you to go to a life in tapestry.com where there's information about the exhibition there's also a lot of young people here. You can follow A Life in Tapestry on Instagram if you want. That would be great. Um, just and for tell them about the, the Mirage. Oh yeah, and the show is currently hung at the Mirage JCC, which is in Orange County, California. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's been on a kind of syncopated opening schedule. It went up a year ago right as the world shut down and so but the mirage is opening up little by little but i think is very much looking forward to people coming to see the show in person so um rabbi um should 
we unmute everybody and if there are questions just you know uh, just when you're not speaking just uh, or, or put it in the chat whichever wh whatever you prefer yeah the easiest way is probably if you have a question put it in the chat everyone can see it um obviously this concludes the uh, the program but please stay on for a little while if you have questions place the uh, question in the chat so that we have some order thank you um so we, Maya and I, I'm answering one question from another Jody. Maya and I live in Pasadena and Judy lives in San Marino. So that was part of our great fortune that we are, we are live close to each other that the LA Museum of the Holocaust decided to introduce Maya to Trudy. Um, yes, we are in the car. My father has been ill. So Maya and I took a trip to uh we we got vaccinated and quickly went to see my dad so that's why we're we're in the car <laughs> well the technology the technology worked great and uh, we are mm -hmm. so appreciative uh of you coming on and while people type a few questions in the chat uh i know i'm a slow typist but um, uh, it was a fantastic experience. And I, I just can't say enough, the, the book is so moving and so beautiful at the same time. And uh, you'll get it to Amazon Prime in a, two days, right, Gail, a couple of days. And uh, it's, just, it's just so awe-inspiring and you'll be so engrossed in it. It's a, it's a great story, a great read and great writing by, uh, by uh, Jody and, and Trudy's Remembrances. Yeah. Reading this book will, oh, re reading this book is uh, what will always remind us to remember the Holocaust, that it will never happen again. And we must fight everything that uh, pertains to hatred, to groups of people believing in something, to having that that they are going to be incarcerated for that and that is what we need to remember that it will never happen again i thank you hal hal i just put the book in my cart and amazon said in the next 10 <laughs> hours if i buy it it will be here tomorrow <laughs> oh my goodness thank you debbie for that yeah and, and uh, we're going to donate a copy to jody and our and our library um and maybe there'll be a few copies so people can check it check it out so thank you for that debbie you're welcome we, we did we do jump around a bit in trudy's story but the book the book tells the story in much more detail yes. and um and i'm a screenwriter typically i it's the only um book that uh that i've actually ever written so it's written more like a like a, a screen story <laughs> fill in a lot of blanks did somebody ask how old you are now trudy i think that must be for you yes i'm, I'm in 12. my i'm in my 84th year and uh i keep telling that to jody i just turned 80 well i'm I'm in my 84th year. I turned 83. She's 83. She says, yes, yeah, she's 83. I said, no, I'm in my 84th year. I've, I've done this most of my life. Maybe I've always been old. I don't know, but uh, uh, wanting to be older. <laughs> and uh, But I'm very appreciative, able to function. And uh, I, I'm, I'm still um, a function, meaning to embroider. <laughs> that is my craft. And... Um, so we'll continue, right, Jody? <laughs> yes, we will continue. And I also like to point out that behind Trudy is an empty wall. And that is because Maya has all the pictures hung at the Mirage JCC. So it's one of the rare moments that Trudy's walls are empty. <laughs> yes, yes. But it, 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 it's, it's quite all right. I hope that many of you will get to see the exhibit and um, and thereby understand the story more. Mm -hmm. Yes, and also if, I mean, the exhibit is supposed to move from Orange County to uh, to Texas, but um, but Maya has gotten, do you want to, you should say, gotten other grants to travel it? Yeah, I mean, like, 
I'm always applying for grants to travel it and we have gotten a few and if anyone here has connections or suggestions for places to travel the show, um, you can email me. If you go to the website, you can find my email. Uh, <laughs> and I will promptly respond because we're looking for places uh, to travel the show. You yeah, see, con you see a lot of interruption by COVID, yeah. Yes, my dear congregation of this synagogue, can you see how precious this young woman is? Oh yeah. And her thought process, just, and then of course her mother, I love her mothers too, so. <laughs> the whole family is gorgeous. <laughs> uh, Jody, can you put up a, quickly a couple more pieces if, if you're if yeah. it's capable? So, and then we have a few questions in the chat and we'll let the rabbi ha handle the chat questions, but a couple more pieces of the art uh, might be fun to see. We, we can put up a couple details because uh, yeah, here's a here's a detail of this is a very large piece, a tribute to Sholem Aleichem. Um, yeah. This is a very small detail from a very large piece, but it lets you see the intricacy of one very small section of this very large piece. Yes, well, it was it, it was a joy to embroider this piece uh, because. I included several stories pertaining to present day life. He wrote them, well, it's, it's, it's 100 years ago and um, uh, from the old shtetl and so forth. But you know, all of these, uh, whatever happens in that family at that time, similar things happen today. Uh, it, like the, the woman with a pot, she's standing next to, a, uh, to the rabbi and she's just talking his head off because she is a tattletale. She talks about other people. And uh, then I had two young men who fight tearing their beards out because they inherited a chair in the synagogue, in the sanctuary. And so they're fighting over, over their inheritance. That happens today. <laughs> so, so some of the pertinent uh, um, misgivings that we have in our lives that we don't overcome still happen today. And this was an enjoyable piece to do the um, uh, Distinguished Women of Achievement. It's a very large round piece. 36 inches round. In diameter, yeah. Yes. It celebrates and, many of our Jewish female heroes. Yes, yes. And at the time when I, uh, when I did this, the most famous uh, uh, Anna Rosenberg, uh, she was, what was she again? Uh, the Assistant uh, Secretary yeah, of Defense. Yeah, right, right. That was the highest position a Jewish woman ever had in America. And of course, 86, that's quite a while back. And today we have many more accomplished, deserving women too have received um, uh, blessings. Maya, there's a direct question to you as, as such an impressive young adult uh, about your future plans and where, where you see yourself going. Big question. I don't have an answer, but- Where do you see yourself in five years is the interview question, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, hopefully, uh, I mean, I'm a senior in high school, so hopefully I will go to college next year. And then after that, I don't know what I want to do, but I'm interested in like the intersections of art and activism and politics policy. Um, so hopefully something in that space, which is similar to what we've talked about today. Thank you. And there's a couple of questions about where, where it's going in Texas. Any idea specifically? Uh, UT, you, it's just lies in conversations with UT about, about whether it can be brought to that space. Yeah. Yeah, it was supposed to go to Detroit. Was it Detroit? I mean, it was, it had a, but you know, air, the museums just had to shut down. And someone and, asked about the LA Moth, I think. Um, no, oh, there is a permanent exhibit at LA Moth, which now has a new name, 
um, of, tr of the dolls, Badges of Shame. That is always there. It is their most popular exhibit um, because it appeals to the young and the old. Um, yeah. So that is always there. Trudy donated that. She does no longer owns it. And, you know, we, well, they allowed us to come in and, and do um, high quality photographs of it. And during which Trudy repaired, repaired a lot of the pieces. Um, th you know, that can always be seen at, at LA Moth under their new name. Mm -hmm. And what somebody, oh, the Sydney Jewish Museum. I've been trying to reach them. My sister-in-law lives in Sydney, but, um, but I, they, uh, we haven't. We have a person. Now we Aviva. have a person, Aviva. <laughs> I'll put my email in the. In yeah, the Susanna, if you have any specific contacts, because we're always okay. looking for an excuse to get back to Sydney and visit our relatives. Oh, okay. I, I, uh, I just got in touch with a, a woman named Aviva. Um, I, um, I have a movie that I'm promoting in 